Hello everyone. This flower girl Jay. Like uh it's been raining. Like so it's kind of wet out here, but I don't, I needed to get some air. So we are outside. Yay. <laughs> so to continue from last week. Um I told you a little bit about how God had called me to be a pastor, but I was I was in denial cause, because I was always taught that women could not be pastors and they would point scripture to where Paul of misinterpretations of Paul but I thought that's what really what Paul was saying about women one of the big ones was that I'm paraphrasing I forbid women like women to speak in what was another one famous one they like to use? Um, there's a lot. Like, I can't really think right now, but that's like one of the major ones. And I'm trying to think. Ugh, I'm drawing a blank right now. But there are, you know, scriptures that the UPC and the UPCI and people and apostolic churches that are not affiliated but secretly are um point two but like my, my particular churches both of them the first one the second one and even the third one i went to which we'll talk about later um they all agreed that you know women can't preach especially in the second church um so because I was taught that I didn't believe God was talking to me or could talk to me because I was I felt like I wasn't worthy to be talked to and I thought you know all oh, this is must be a demon or something you know or something else because one, I was taught women cannot preach, and two, I didn't want to do it. <laughs> uh, so today, it might be a long one because this video might be a little bit longer. Because, and I apologize. Um, I'm sorry, I keep saying I'm um a lot, and you're probably saying, well, "Stop saying sorry." That's part of my healing too, because it's like I've always had to feel sorry for myself we're going to talk about that and the reason why it's going to be long today is because I want you guys to understand uh what women in that kind of environment have to go through and I was like before I even started this video I was like well how am I going to explain it today and the Lord moved it up moved upon me to explain to you all how this really does damage women especially i'm not saying it doesn't damage men but in that kind of environment it's like more damaging to women i mean it's damaging period but i'm really going to talk about today how my church both of them the first one the second one i i think i talked a bit about the first one how it was treating women but the second one was really bad okay so we're going to talk about women in leadership and women in general in that environment because you guys need to see some of you may have not been in this environment at all and you're probably thinking well where is the abuse like where I you know when it comes to women so that's what we're going to talk about today um and also when the scriptures that they use, I know there's some of you who have been in, so you know what I'm talking about. And I'm sorry for those who have not, and I can't think of all the scriptures right now, but that was the main one they would use that the, basically women wish, you know, you need to shut up. You can't, you know, sh ask your husband what is going on. You need to ask your husband or whatever. Um, so that's why all, and so imagine all of that, that you have to shut up, you're not allowed to speak, 
like women cannot speak up for themselves because that's seen as rebellious and that's seen as it's just a no-no like uh the last time we talked i talked about my mother and i said she was a very outspoken person she really is and that's a big no-no in the church it really is like if a woman even stood up for herself in my church like that was frowned upon and she was shunned for speaking out like even right now as i'm speaking out right now and telling you my story that's a big no no i would have been accused of attacking the church i would that church you know i would have been accused of lying which i'm not lying to you all I mean, why would I lie to you all? I'm not a liar. I mean, I, I've got witnesses that I'll tell you I'm not. I'm very real. Um, I would also be called, you know, a backslider too because I don't go to that church and I'm telling y'all the truth. So I would have been, I mean, I'm still shunned guys. Like guys, like I am shunned for even doing following what god has for me i'm in rebellion to them so basically in that environment ever since i was growing up i told you guys earlier in the videos and in, in earlier videos um in that church I was trying to be somebody I wasn't and even in the, like well the second one the the bishop I told you about who did run the first church he was there till I told you he moved but even like at the first church I really sensed that I was trying to fit in and losing myself you know but thing is when you're young and a woman and especially for all the women who are watching this we you all know and we all know that we all go through this stage of wanting to be accepted like that's like our teenage years you know like we want to fit in we want to belong to something uh we're trying to find ourselves i mean even in college like that's what people pretty majority of people will tell you you need to go to college to find yourself and I believe that because college did help me find myself. And we'll talk about how they don't want women to go to college either. But basically at the first church and the second church, women, your only job was to do what the pastor said. You, the women were mostly the runners, okay? And men too, but the women in the church, they were, a lower level runner so yes going back to our period uh, our pyramid <laughs> oh, wait it's not a pyramid right <laughs> like it's not a pyramid scheme but it is but <laughs> um going back to our chart if you all remember so if we just look at the runners women were mostly the lower level runners and when i mean that like men had a higher level of runnership like they would sometimes be on the platform sometimes they would do things that the women couldn't and what things am i saying like like what things am i referring to well let's start off with the women the women could only take care of the kids like VBS or Sunday school or daycare, I think I said daycare already, but uh, anything with kids, that's the only thing you were involved in and just or cooking and if you're lucky, secretary, that's it, that is it, like you couldn't teach. You couldn't have your own ministry. You were running for the pastor's wife, but mostly for the pastor. 
mostly for the pastor at my church anyway and um, I mean you could have like a women's meeting but that's about it but it had to be approved so <laughs> I mean and as for men you had men runners you men could do a lot more they didn't have to they weren't back in the kitchen uh, to be quite honest guys like if I you know I'm trying to remember what did the men do I mean uh, I know they were, uh, they would work media and they would which I wanted to do and I did for a while but you know I was kicked out Oh, they sell DVDs. They uh, fix the, they you know fix the church if they need it needs repairs and whatnot. You know that's the men's job. But I wanted to do that too. But um, that was a no no. That was a no no. And at the first church with both the bishop and his brother it's like they didn't see me you know what I mean like they didn't see me for my worth and what I could do I think they saw that I had a gifting of God but they wanted to use it for their advantage and that's another thing like if a woman has a gift and a calling on her life they will use it for their advantage, for their kingdom, and not for the growth of that person. But I was seen as invisible for years. And it's like, I was only known as my mother's daughter, like Judy's daughter. And I'm proud to be my mom's daughter. Don't get me wrong, y'all. Me and my mom are like this. I'm like, okay. But it's like, I'm also my own person too. And I wanted people to see me. And I told my mom this a while back. And, you know, we talked about it. My mom said it's because they only see her because she's bringing in people from the, from the hospital and she's a plastic and she's true and it's true, but she didn't know the term. She just said they just see me as money and that's the only reason now I understand. But back then it hurt as a kid that like I still wasn't being seen. I didn't want people to know me as Judy's daughter. Like, I'm proud to be my mom's daughter, but I'm also my own person. And a lot of women struggle with this. Like, finding out who they are. Every woman, all women struggle with this. Whether you were in this environment or not. But it really hits hard when you're in, in an environment like that. There is no individuality. There is no individuality. You're only called to what they say you're called. It's God, if God called you to that, he didn't call you to that. And through my experience I have seen women who have gifts like they are so gifted in God and God has give called them like and you're like how do you know but let me tell you something when somebody is called by God you they you see their fruits you see God <laughs> like you do I mean even in the word of God says that you judge them by their fruit that they bear and unfortunately I in my experience I've seen these women not even come to their fullness they're still bound and or they've just given up on God completely and I think that's the saddest part um, Bishop and his brother, his sister was a, 
gifted in teaching. Like, oh my gosh, people loved her and they learned. They loved her because she was patient. She was a teacher. I mean, I got to tell you something, guys. Like, when it comes to the fivefold ministry, teachers are so neglected. Even in the world, like, school teachers are so... <laughs> they're so neglected like they're seen they're they're not even seen but teachers of the word of god are are taken for granted we need them and she was so gifted and so anointed to teach she really was and i'm not exaggerating like she would break it down for you to where you understood and she would bring real world event like the real world events and tie it in with scripture not a lot of people can do that i mean a lot of us uh young people that's why a lot of young people they're saying oh church doesn't really connect with the real world but she connected it if I'm making any sense. But her brothers, Bishop and and his brother, took her out of everything. Like all teaching. Because like they were jealous of her. And they were jealous because people wanted to hear her. And they didn't want them so they took her out of everything they took away her their her class they took away um she also taught and time but not scared you with it like but they took her out of that like they they ended it and now i don't think she's following god at all now like she's She's suffering from anorexia right now. So please play, pray for her. But that's a lot. And there's a lot of sad stories of women that I've seen just give up. And I think that's the saddest story. Now there's women who haven't given up on God. And they're healing. But looking back, it's like not just the physical you know you have to wear this uh skirt down to your ankles and whatnot it, it i mean it, it wasn't just the outward bondage it was the inward bound bondage too you were bound on the inside and bound on the outside <laughs> like you know what i mean and it's really sad though but i hope you're starting to get an understanding of women what women go through so we were only we could only be in the kitchen that's it we couldn't have leadership positions you couldn't talk in front of everybody unless you got permission uh, it's crazy really and at my second church, uh, the bishop's son was really, really downing women. I mean, I hated every time he preached because he would always accuse us women of being gossipy and uh that's all we did was gossip and he would even if he saw this video he said i'm just a big gossip and worldly and i i just want i just couldn't stand it like it's like every time i would meet up him he would dog out women let me tell you something and the, and i'm being real with y'all at my church the men were more gossipy than the women were just throwing that out there and I even got so mad I looked up a study of who gossips more and there's actually a study look it up um, I don't know where it is now but there was a research that they did of who gossiped the most 
And it turns out that men and women gossip pretty much easily, equally. <laughs> so, I mean, it just ticked me off. It really did. Mm-mm-mm. And... I would like to share with you, like, just how it's, it, it, how it really affects women when you tell them, oh, you're nothing but gossipy women, or you're just, uh, you're, pr they're pretty much telling women that you're nothing, that you're nothing. And, uh, that's my dad. my dad folks anyway like, lost my train of thought now <clears throat> anyway um just to give you an example me and my mom helped uh, set up for a graduation party because um, a sister of the church had graduated from college got her bachelor's and asked my mom if she can throw an open house because I was <laughs> because me and my mom were famous for throwing parties <laughs> like my open house my high school open house oh my goodness it was it was awesome they've never seen an open house like that and so she wanted my high it was my high school and my college open house like we knew how to decorate and we knew how to coordinate that's a no-no at the church too like women can't do stuff <laughs> but anyway uh, my mom she booked the place for them to have the party and me and my mom were setting up you know decorating and Bishop's son's wife wanted to help and you know and offered to help and I said okay like we said okay and like my mom put her with me to decorate and so we decorated well I decorated but it's like she didn't know she didn't know how to do things like she kept asking what should I do with this or what should I do with this like she'd have streamers in her head what should I do with this you know I said well you know you take the streamer and wrap around the pole it's like how do you do that you just wrap it around the pole see just like that and then um, she was at, like when we were setting up the table putting the tablecloth on like uh, how do I put this on there where do I put this it's like she was questioning how to do things it was like she didn't know how, how to do things and I'm not making fun of her I'm not I hope y'all know that I'm not but that's what happens when you're in a abusive environment like that you don't know what to do I mean it's like you lose yourself so much to where you have to ask people do I should I do this should I do that should I, do that? Did I? I even suffer from that I still do I was like uh okay are you sure you want me to do this are you positive and then it's like perfectionism is the word but with her it was like she didn't really didn't know what to do and she went to school to be a teacher and all of a sudden she married she marries the bishop's son and then all of a sudden she doesn't know how, how to do things and that's another thing too like marriage getting married finding well finding a man is more important than finding god that's another thing that was in my church and in the first church like that's all you were good for was being in the kitchen taking care of kids and then getting married and having your own kids and that's the end of your story i thank god that that is not the end of my story and that's not the end of your you all story oh my goodness but yeah she didn't know how to it's like she didn't know how to do the simplest things because, you know, even women in my church were taught that 
you know, the men know more than you do, and you are underneath man, <laughs> like, even if you're not married, <laughs> like, you're still submissive under a man. Pastor, yeah, and, but under men in the church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So some of you are like, wow. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, and they don't like women going to college. They don't like any, even the boys go to college. They, they don't. And I told you guys about this, but with women, definitely not because you're independent. You have, I mean, in college, you have to learn how to be independent. You have to learn how to be responsible and you got to learn how to think. <laughs> I mean, I loved college better than high school, to be honest with you all. I loved it. And it was the key for me realizing I could do things on my own. Because even if I've been in that environment so long, I always thought I couldn't do things for myself. Like, I don't. I was even like scared to go off to college because I was scared that nobody would be able to be nobody would be able to do my hair. <laughs> I was scared because I didn't know how to do my hair. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to go to college. Can you believe that? <laughs> but I learned how to do my hair through God. God will teach you anything you want to learn. And I'm a living witness to that. But, yeah, they didn't want women to go to college because that's where you think, you know, like, that's where you grow. That's where you find, start finding out who you are. And every time I went back to college, I didn't want to go to church. I didn't want to go to church because I would be back in that environment telling me that that's all I was good for. And when I graduated from college, I'm kind of skipping this major story, but I'll probably tell you next time because the focus is really on women and my experience. But when I graduated from college, they wanted me from ORU. They wanted me, I could see like when I came back and when I graduated, they you know had a little ceremony for me because I was the only one who graduated from college in the second church and the sister but uh that we talked about but um they wanted me to be a runner and they really wanted me to be a runner and be a daycare worker and I didn't want to do that and you know you can't say no to the pastor but I want I was getting ready to say no because I don't want to do that and I know God has more for me than that don't get me wrong I love kids I love kids I love working with kids I still work with kids I have a library channel where I a story time channel where I read to kids you should check it out seeds of harvest library i promote it because you know we need kids to read books <laughs> so bad <laughs> but i never would have thought i could do that have a library channel and even own a library an actual library where you walk in and read and have we have computers i never thought i would own i never thought i could do things i i mean it took me coming out to realize what I can do. And because if I was still in there, I'd be working the daycare and I'd be running. They would run my butt, <laughs> just like the sister they wanted me to be. And so I, I, I didn't want to be like what they wanted me to be. I wanted to be what God wanted me to be. And I knew he had something for me and he still does. But going back to the graduation party for that sister, the pastor's son, I mean, Bishop's son, excuse me, the Bishop's son 
Like, he would make, and this is not just the only time. He has always made snide remarks to me, kind of racist remarks to me. Um, he can't, we, we were outside, him and his wife and me, and uh, he was saying, uh, you know, you and me should go hunting sometime. And, you know, I'm, I'm don't let this dress fool you. I'm down with whatever. Like, I can get down and dirty. Probably not right, not right, not right now with these nails, but I can get down and dirty if I need to. <laughs> Don't let the dress and the cuteness fool you. And then he, and then I was like, sure. I was like, that's cool. And he said, nah, you can't come with me. And he was looking at me and his wife said, both of y'all would be gossiping in the tree or you know gossiping and scaring Bambi away you know or y'all be too sensitive to shoot Bambi <sighs> I'm like really mm -hmm. really I'm too gossipy to go hunting listen if you're if you're a dude who hunts on here like you know if you're watching me and you hunt I'm down with hunting with you if you invite me. I, but if we gonna be at the crack of dawn, you owe me some McDonald's. <laughs> I wanna stop <dump> McDonald's. <laughs> but I'm down for it, whatever. And that lets me know. And he claimed, he, he actually claimed to be a friend of mine, like be friends with me. If you were friends with me, you wouldn't make that comment. And at the same party, at the same time, I, you know, I was eating potato salad, right? And, there, you know, he came up to me and said, hey, Jazz, and was giving me a hand, you know, a handshake, reaching out for my hand, but I had potato salad on both on my hands and had no napkins. So I was like, uh. <laughs> and then I, I, I shook his hand like this because I didn't want him to get potato salad. And he's like, what is that a gang sign is that a new gang sign <laughs> guys mm. now you got if you guys have followed me you all pretty much have a feel of who I am and if for those of you who have gotten to know me I ask you like do I look like a gang banger to you <laughs> like do I look like a gangster to you Cause let me tell you something. L write in the comment below. <laughs> because let me tell you something. Um, if I was, I'd be a pretty weak gang gangster. Okay, I'd be pretty weak. Yeah. Hey, I got the goods. I got the goods. There's some ba there's some brownies in the oven. Yeah, man, that's the good stuff up in there. <laughs> What up? <laughs> what up? <laughs> I'd be pretty weak. I made some jello, man. You want some jello? <laughs> I'm being silly, y'all. I'm sorry. I was like, you got something. Okay. I'm being silly, y'all. I'm sorry. But, uh,. <laughs> and there's been other comments too that were just yeah racist you know that's all I can say but going back to women now I hope you guys have a gist of what the women in my church and just women in that environment go through it's like we really struggle to find ourselves and in that environment you don't think for yourself you only do what you're told and you don't know what you're capable of and it took me coming out to realize what I was capable of what I could do I mean there's some things that I'm amazed at that I didn't know I could do and it's amazing and I would have, if I was still in that environment, I wouldn't be the flower girl. I wouldn't have been. 
I wouldn't even I wouldn't even know that God sees me as a flower in his eyes. I would have just felt like I was a nobody and that I was and I'd be busy too busy trying to be like everybody because that was my thing I was trying to be like everybody but Jasmine I wanted to be like my mom I wanted to be like my godmother my gami I wanted to be like um this sister I'm um my god dad's wife my god mom my other god mom and God had to separate me from these people to that I really wanted to be like to make me realize that I gotta be me. I gotta be the Jasmine that God has created, that God has a plan for. And unfortunately, a lot of these women who are in this environment do not realize who they really are and the potential that they have. Some of them do, but are too scared to show it or too scared to reveal it or too scared to tell anybody about it because they're afraid of being shunned for it or being called lesbian <sighs> which it was a lot in the second church uh, women who spoke out and want wanted to follow their dreams or follow uh what they felt like god was calling them to and they questioned the pastor or they quit you know when he was in the wrong and who asked questions they were called lesbians so lesbians are gossipy women and like honestly <laughs> um sorry i thought i saw a mockingbird no not mockingbird hummingbird but anyway it's just really sad because women don't have a voice. And if they try to have a voice, they're seen as rebellious and Jezebel's, but mostly, mostly he, uh, we were called gossipy women. So, so I'm going to stop it right there and I'm going to pray. Let's pray together. Like Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here uh, once again, Lord Jesus, to talk about issues that are going on in these churches, Lord, because you have called women to freedom. You've called them to, you have called them to be leaders, Lord Jesus, for you to bring people to you. And Father God, we thank you for bringing people today to your word, Father God, to people who need to hear this, Lord Jesus, because they've probably been told that they are nothing more than servants, but they're servants of you, Father God, and not slaves. <laughs> There's a difference between being a servant and a slave, Father God, and these women have been in slavery for far too long. And Father God, I pray whoever watches this, Lord, that it brings a light to them, Father God, that there is hope and that they can, too, find out who they really are and stop trying to be somebody they're not and try to, trying to please man when they should be pleasing you. They're already pleasing to you. And Father God, for those who have come out, Father God, let them not turn away from you but draw ever closer to you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I feel like in my spirit that there's a woman watching this. And you know, I ain't a prophet. I, I, so some, it's just something in my spirit telling me that there's a woman watching this who's just longing to just break free, but don't know how to. And are, is scared that you know God's calling you to something. You don't know what. Sometimes it takes a separation to find out what you, who you are in Christ. So I pray you continue to watch it and, and seek, seek out others, Father. To seek out 
it's time to not be silent anymore. It's time to talk about it. It's time for you to break free. In Jesus' name, amen. See you all next week.